So about a year ago, I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to purchase my first Triton bass boat. Um, I posted a walk around video and by far the most requested video on my channel is uh, to show a full review and a walkthrough of this boat. So today that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to walk you through the entire boat, everything I've done to it, all the, the, the way I have it set up, the layout uh, that I have, um, how I store things, um, what I love about the boat, what I'd like to improve about the boat, pretty much everything. So if you are considering purchasing a 19 TRX Triton bass boat, this is the video for you. So we're going to get started. We're going to do a walk around on the outside, show you everything. We're going to go over everything from prop to trolling motor. So let's get started. All right, so here she is, the Triton Boats 19 TRX Patriot. All right, let's do a quick walk around here, and then we're going to come back here. We're going to start in the very back of the boat with our prop and move forward. But you can, uh, you can see, maybe I'm biased, but the black and orange just looks great to me. You know, I will say I just finished the tournament yesterday, and the boat's a little dirty. Um, so she needs to be cleaned up, and I'll even go over how I clean it up. But it is a little dirty, so if it doesn't look in showroom condition, pristine showroom condition, it's just because I just finished up fishing. But let's start right here with our prop. Okay, this is how we get, this is a good place to start because this is, no. we're not going anywhere without our prop, right? So I get asked a lot, what kind of prop are you running? Are you running three blades or four blades? I am running a, a Fury three-bladed prop, all right? It is a 24 pitch. And I'm not the guy that, I'm, I'm not a real, I'm not a mechanic. You know, I, I can't get into a whole lot of details on prop sizes, which one's better for you, which one's better for a heavier load, which one's better for your top end speed. Man, I don't know, okay? I'm just not that kind of guy. I know I'm very little about props. I understand prop pitch sizes and how big and the diameter and all, but I'm not a guy that can answer all of your questions. But here's what I can tell you. See these little black circles here? There's three of them on your prop. These are vent plugs. When I bought the boat, all of these were wide open and there was a little plastic boat. There was, there was a little plastic uh, bag in the boat in one of the compartments that had these little plastic vent plugs in them. I had found that when I was trying to get out of the hole with the boat, it was almost over revving. It felt like what I want to say, it, maybe over revving isn't the right word. It just felt like the prop wanted to blow out of the water. So I got, I started doing some research and I put one vent plug in. I was like, that's a little better. I got to put, you know, I, I can give it a little more pedal now. And then I put two, two plugs in. I was like, that's, that's, I can, I can live with that. And then I put three, I, I filled all the vent plugs up. And then it, I said it was perfect. It felt really good. So before I put any of the vent props in, I had just like almost barely touched the, well, I wouldn't say that, probably about, a, you know, I put about 25% throttle into the hot foot and it just like felt like it was about to blow out of the water, um, the back end of it. So, but by the time I had, you know, tried one, two and, and, and three of the, the prop, the, the vent props in, um, I, I found that I was able to give my, my, uh, hot foot about three quarters throttle and i was able to get on top of the water or on on plane and i didn't feel like uh i was about to, it was about to blow out of the water and or over rev or anything like that so i if you know if, i feel like every boat is different and you may or may not need these vent plugs uh, but for me and my boat how it's set up i feel that it gets on plane so much better it just feels better to me with all of these plugs filled. Um, if you didn't know, uh, your prop may have these little circle, it, it's just that, it's just a circle hole here and these little plastic plugs go right in there. We could take one out. If you had a flathead screwdriver, you can get in there and, uh, and, and pry them out. Uh, but I'm gonna leave them in for right now. Uh, okay, so that's the prop. Next up, let's talk about this. This is the motor. This is the new Mercury four stroke, 225 horsepower. I get asked a lot, you know, what, how do you like the four stroke? How do you like it? Like, well, it, it shouldn't even be a question anymore. Four strokes are far superior 
to two strokes. I get asked, what do you like best about it? The absolute best thing I like about it is never, ever, ever having to buy two stroke oil again. You know how much money that's gonna save you over the course of a year? It's a lot of fishing tackle that you could be purchasing instead. So I love the Mercury four stroke. Um, it's been a great motor. It's got a lot of acceleration and mid range kind of. So if I'm cruising along at 35 and then I floor it, I mean, I'm up to 55 really quickly. It's a great, great motor. I'm a big fan of Mercury. Um, I'm not really associated with them in any way right now, um, but I believe in their product. Um, and I also purchased the Mercury Platinum warranty with this, which I believe gives me five years of warranty coverage, five full years of full coverage. If anything goes out, if anything's wrong, it's really good to know that I am covered no matter what. I'd really highly recommend that, especially on a new boat, especially for a tournament guy. All right, that, that Platinum warranty is a very good idea. It's a little more money up front, but it could save you a lot in the long run. And so far, I have not had any issues where I needed anything warranty related with the motor. Um, how many hours do I got on this thing? I've got, well, I've got over a hundred for sure. Um, I had a hundred at the beginning of this year. Um, so honestly, I'm probably pushing, I don't even know. We can look here in a little while because I have a, an app on my phone that can help me look. But um so far all i've had to do is the yearly service the one year service uh which was pretty basic just change the oil nothing nothing too major so that's good i think the maintenance on these is a little bit less uh, than the old two strokes and again no oil man i mean it frees up room in your bilge, bilge because there's no oil tank there's just a just it's just a phenomenal motor um I, you know i don't want to say bulletproof or anything like that because anything can happen, but I'm impressed. I'm pleased. I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, I, I just like it. I'm good with it. So next, let's talk about the jack plate. The boat comes with, and I think probably almost all new ones, unless you order them, you know, custom order them. They're going to come with the TH Marine Z-Lock jack plate. You know, that jack plate is, the Z-Lock is so hard to adjust it really really is it's very hard to adjust and mine came crooked the holes on it were actually crooked so the motor was leaning like a quarter inch to the right and so i was actually replaced uh, under warranty um and i had the opportunity to get another one i was like i don't want a z-lock and so uh, my dealer had this slide master so we threw this slide master on here um, it's much easier to adjust and the thing about manual jack plates is once you um, adjust them they're pretty much good to go i mean you don't have once you get them set up right you don't have to touch them anymore i will say though i wish i wasn't so cheap when i had the opportunity to upgrade my jack plate i wish i had a, went ahead and got a hydraulic jack plate because I've been in several instances where I really wish I had a hydraulic jack plate to jack this thing all the way up so I can get on and get get on plane in like three foot of water. Um, and there's also some instances where you want a hydraulic jack plate when you're going through heavy heavy water. And so I really wish I had it in some of those situations. Um, but maybe one day we'll upgrade and we'll get that hydraulic jack plate. But for now, I'm running the Slide Master. Happy with it. I've set it. Um, if you're wondering what my prop to pad is, I'm, yeah, prop to pad. I'm running two and a half inches. I'm not going to go into what prop to pad is, but that's what uh, you know I'm running at right now. Two and a half inches. Um, what's next? Uh, that's the basic thing. Oh yeah, here. Let's look at this. Hold on. Okay, your boat probably is not going to come with these. These are called steer stops. My boat did not come with it. And why it's not a why it is not a standard feature i do not know but these you stick these on here i need to turn the motor a little bit to the left or right to kind of get that in but these steer stops keep your motor from swaying left or right uh, while you're traveling down the road um gotta have these i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about this for a second just because you need to have these so i bought my boat and i was three hours from home three and a half hours from home and by the time i got home my motor my motor was sitting crooked not crooked but sideways like it had, it had turned itself that's just because you didn't have these steer stops in here when you're traveling so make sure you have steer stops these are from th marine uh they're good uh, i think there's these are the older models they have some newer ones now that uh, look a little different but uh same concept just kind of keeps everything in place while you're moving 
All right, what's next? Um, oh, there's, I, we'll go over all the details, I guess. But next is boat buckles. Boat buckles are really nice to have. Uh, I don't ever have to worry about using ratchet straps or anything. And while we're down here, we'll look real quick. I have a remote drain plug. Can you see that? Make sure you can see that, a remote drain plug. And I have my hummingbird transducer there. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit too. And I did not screw directly into my hole like the factory decided to do i put it i installed a stern saver that gray puck right there is a stern saver that's epoxied uh to the back of my hole and um it's it's uh no holes in my transom however there's two holes that i had to fill with 3m5200 because i guess the people at the factory felt like it's okay to drill holes in a transom it's not when you are you know installing your own transducers don't drill holes in your transom you don't have to this is a like i say a stern saver um, you can get these for 50 bucks keep the holes out of your transom speaking of electronics i installed all my electronics and uh i'm a tech guy i'm an it guy by trade i'm really good with stuff like that so uh, I saved myself a lot of money by installing my own stuff, ran my own transducer cables, set everything up good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I installed that myself. All right, now let's see what's next here. This, I did install this uh, plug here so I can make charging a lot easier. We're gonna dive in, into here in just a minute, uh, but I wanted to say I did drill out a hole here and I did uh, install this so I could easily just, I would never have to open anything, any this compartment or do anything weird. I can, I can uh, when I get off the water for the day, I'm ready to charge up. I can quickly open that up, charge up really easily. All right, uh, this is the Flowrite remote drain plug. I highly recommend this. You know how many times, I mean, I think at least three times in my life with all my older boats, I put I forgot to put the plug in and i've done that twice with this boat but it didn't even matter because all i gotta do is come in here and it's it's in watch this all right so we're out right we just saw that we're out see that it's out it's so simple so easy now she's in you're covered you're good i'm gonna leave it in because we're about to get in the water all right we'll go down the side here real quick the trailer the trailer's nothing um we'll talk about it I don't, I don't know what to say about the trailer. It's been good. It pulls good. Um, no issues with the trailer, um, thankfully. So I'm, I'm happy with that. There's not too much I can talk to. I will say I want a trick step bad. Like I, I want, but it's $500. Um, but I want to be able to install a trick step here so I can walk into the boat a lot easier. But the trailer overall is good. Nothing, nothing bad to say about it or nothing in general to say about it. It's a good trailer. It works. So I fish by myself like 98% of the time. And so I've gotten really good at putting in the boat by myself. And it's amazing to see some people can't put in their boat by yourself. But anyway, it's besides the point. Uh, it's fairly simple what I do. You gotta get you a dock though. And so you can kind of unload beside the dock. But I have this uh, rope here and it's kind of in, in tied to my bed up there a little bit. And uh, so yeah, I guess I'll show you how I uh, put the boat in by myself. Okay, we're on the boat. Kind of came out here, back in my pocket a little bit, kind of get out of the wind and the noise and away from any boat traffic, but we're here. So let's start. Let's start again, all the way at the back. And we'll go through every compartment, show you how I've got it laid out, show you how, uh, you know, I have this laid out the way that I like to tournament fish, organized the way I like to have it. Also, when you're laying your boat out, wouldn't think about it but you need to think about weight placement where's your most heaviest stuff at and we'll go over that and i'll show you what i do for that as well but let's start in the very back compartment back here <laughs> and i hate to start off with something negative but you see i would really like a gas assist spring or strut on this compartment somewhere when you're back here trying to do stuff 
I mean, this thing won't stay open by itself. And then put that in comparison. No, that doesn't do it either. But put it in comparison. See right here real quick? Those struts right there. Kind of keep it lifted up for me. See? I would really like to have one of those struts back here. So, but anyway, aside from that, one of the things that is in this boat that you wonder like, wow, I, I really love this and I want all my boats going forward to have this feature, is these little trays in here. These trays are awesome because it gives you more spot for storage. And if you didn't know, in bass fishing, you need all the storage you can get. So this is phenomenal. I love these. I use one to keep all my cleaning supplies on. Um, this is what I clean my boat with most of the time. I just spray this on um, every time I, after getting off the water. Keeps it nice and clean. 303 is good for all the plastic and vinyl. Uh, and this is for the carpet. We're going to take this out because I'm going to need this here in a minute to show you. Uh, and then some glass wipes for my grass. Um, and then some... Uh, microfiber tiles and I use these blocks when I am um, have the uh, trailer parked sometime and I have to unhook like if I'm at a hotel or whatever then the other side I have just rope uh, my steer stops uh, another block uh, and then my uh, transom saber here so yeah that's that but let's look in here real quick you'll see it might be a little dark but you'll see I'm running a Minn Kota Precision uh, 460 uh, Precision Charger. Um, it's four banks. Uh, it's 15 amps per bank. Really quick charger. Really good. Um, at this current time, I'm running an, a, a uh, 31 Group AGM Interstate battery. This is the battery that came with the motor. Um, I'm not a giant fan of Interstate. I'd rather be using something else. And eventually, I will upgrade that uh, battery to something I really like. Hold on, the boat's drifting. How about we just spot lock right here? Okay. All right. Uh, on this side, we did a whole video on installing these lithium batteries. Um, these are three lithium ionic batteries. Love them, love them to death. I've had them for almost six months and uh if you didn't see that video you can find it on my channel installing and my initial review of these love them to death they're so much lighter and look how much let's move this look how much build space build space that i have now check that out there's just so much space in there whenever i get power poles lord willing if you'll let me get power poles sometime in the near future i have plenty of space there for my pumps plenty of whatever else i want to put in there there's a ton of space now because i don't have those three giant trolling motor batteries in there right now um the boat has several switches in the back there's one there for your trolling motor and then on our other side we're going to have two one for main power and then one for kind of the breaker uh it's pretty standard it should be standard on all newer boats now uh, but it is good to know I can come back here and flip one switch and power is off on the whole boat. All right. That is the bilge compartment. Oh, I will tell you, you were wondering about Triton. There's like six pumps in here. Uh, mine came with rural pumps. There's two back here, live well pumps. And then I believe there's four up underneath here. Uh, they're kind of a pain to get to, but you can get to them and you can change them out if you have to. Um and there's two pump out two live well two recirc i think that sound right that sounds about right to me let me get that all right next up let's go over these back two compartments pretty standard nothing too fancy but again no strut there no gas strut i really would prefer a, a gas strut um a gas spring um just just it would just i mean this is, looks like it just wants to rip off the side of the boot like that and i don't know i'd really like a little gas spring here um uh, it kind of looks like there's a couple of holes here too so it kind of looks like it's kind of meant for one uh just isn't installed they didn't install it or maybe they didn't want to or maybe they just it's just not something Triton feels like needs to be on the boat but i really wish i had some um i could install them myself and i might in the future but back here in this compartment 
all my light stuff and i'll go over why it's light here in a minute but light life jackets i think there's a weigh-in bag down there yep and then there is my uh, throw cushion and now you, you need all that kind of stuff to be legal uh, on the water now on this side bunch of heavy stuff okay and again we'll go over that some uh, quick lean quick care i should say for your mercury you need to get that uh, keep my graph mounts up here oh extra tackle that i don't use but might need we all have that right okay now we go these this is the some one of the things you hope you never need but have it just in case all right this is a jump starter i hope i never ever need it in the, in the event that fails i have jumper cables in this bag then i have a tool bag you have got to have a tool bag in your boat with the basic necessities basic stuff man you gotta have it you never know what you're going to need on the water just screwdrivers pliers wrenches sockets nuts bolts screws you don't even know what you're going to need i got everything in here but duct tape you gotta have a tool bag in your boat for sure and then what i have in here is more stuff that you might might need in the water stuff to fix things with electrical tape zip ties an extra pair of sunglasses matter of fact two extra pair of sunglasses a flashlight uh what else in here trolling motor props you gotta have extra trolling motor props transom saver in case you drop one in the water you need another one i mean there's just a lot of things that you might need on the water electrical connectors there's a lot of things you might need batteries for my scales a lot of things i just keep picking up stuff and i can't even finish my sentence because there's just so many things that you might need and if you need it it needs to be on your boat i travel a lot okay so if i am four hours from home and i need an electrical connector for something happened i got one right here i don't have to worry about going to a store i don't have to do anything you know it's just you need to be prepared and i've done that and i've got it all loaded in my boat if i need it next up our live wells one of the most important parts of your boat is your live well you got to have good live wells if you're a tournament guy one of the first things i did when i you know got the uh got the boat is i needed a place to store my coal tags couldn't find a really good spot so i kind of built one i went to tractor supply got this little u-bolt right here drilled a couple holes put some stainless steel hardware in all this is stainless steel you do not want anything that's not stainless steel in your boat you know why let me show you why see that can you tell that's rust th marine stop putting stuff look at that rust you don't want rust in your lab well stop don't use use stainless steel stuff on everything in your boat all right you don't want rust i've got to swap out these split rings now because they're not they're they're not stainless steel and they're rusted so use stainless steel anything in your boat you can add this yourself for like five dollars at tractor supply it's really cool really nice place to hang your stuff sometimes when you buy uh a, 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 a coaling system it'll come with some 3m sticky thing it ain't gonna stay on there it's gonna fall off this is wet in here 3m stick anything 3m sticky is not gonna stick for the long term this is stick this is bolts it ain't going anywhere I had a bleeder yesterday too by the way i got a little got a little blood action going on so that's why i got that's why i keep cleaner in the boat case something like this happens so i can just spray it on there let that sit a minute we're gonna come back and wipe it up let me get this up right here because i don't want any kind of any of that in my live well just gonna let that sit a second but uh live wells are pretty you know pretty you know base pretty standard nothing fancy about them um there isn't there's this lip here this cup lipped uh keeps water from coming out there's also an over you probably can't see it but an over drain hole right here um this prevents it from like actually filling up into the live well i did have one time one of these balls got stuck in here and it was stuck in there i don't know if you can see but it was stuck in there just like that and it caused the live well to overflow and it felt and it was you know starting to drain out into the boat that was a little scary because i didn't understand it for the first time um they're matching size they're both identical 
So, and I don't know what else I can say about that. They they do come with these little rubber plugs. Nothing fancy, uh, but they work. They haven't. I've had it come out one time in a tournament once. Um, there are some other aftermarket ones you can get the plug in there, but so far. Uh, whatever it comes with is fine. The lab wells do have two oxygen oxygenators in them right here One on each side uh, No issues with those um, I'd rarely have a dead fish rarely and if I do it's my fault But no, it's not my fault. It just happens naturally like he'll get you know, he'll get hooked deep or uh, He'll take treble hook hooks in his gills and he's a bleeder. That's what happened to this guy here yesterday Which by the way, let's scrub on that real quick But anyway, if I have a fish that goes, you know, that sours on me, it's not, it's not because of the live whales. These are good live whales. Uh, I believe they're 40 gallon. They're enough. You can put 20 pounds in here easy. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, they're good live whales. It's a good system. Um, so yeah, this, I mean, I don't have anything uh, bad to say about them at all. Anything, and, you know, they're just good. They work. Uh, your coal tags, these are TH Marine coal tags. These are by far the best on the on the planet. Uh, the only other ones that uh, that might compare to it are Accu coals. I hate Cow Coast. They're they are so hard to open. It's ridiculous. Even when you learn how to open them, they're hard to open. So these are better one hand. I can coal easy, 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 easy. If you've seen any of my videos, maybe you've seen me coal really easy. The only thing I got bad to say about them is they apparently they rust so they need to fix that i can fix that though with some stainless steel o-rings all right that's the live wheels real quick uh this is a deck plug from what is it called bob's dang what is it called you know what i'm talking about dang a deck plug. bob's machine shop that's right deck deck plug there is normally a hole here where you can put a seat in uh i don't use the seat and usually i'm fishing with people who don't use it so you can have these little deck plugs keeps from stuff falling in that hole plus it just looks cool and they can get you almost any color you want and it matches the boat really good orange all right we're in the cockpit all right so let's start right here where i'm sitting um hummingbird uh helix tn gen 3 installed this myself the boat came with lawrence and uh, i don't know i just feel like hummingbirds better so i switched to hummingbird um, that's what I that's what I'm using right now works good um, side scan side imaging is really great um, I can't show too much of that right now because we're sitting still but um, I'm a big fan of it I've, It's helped me find a lot of offshore fish this year um, the more I use it the better I get at it so I'm a big fan um, gauges at the front here okay here's something I, I don't understand like I don't have a water pressure gauge and it's, it's not here anywhere rpm trim fuel and then miles per hour which is pointless these are never accurate in a bass boat in any boat they're not accurate why do you they don't even need to put these in here anymore these the miles per hour gauge is not accurate you get your speed from your graph from the gps in your graph right now i'm point going point one miles per hour all right so you have that capability in your graph this is some this could be dedicated to something else uh, also i don't have a water pressure gauge i don't get it like i don't understand like I'm, I, I would like to know the water pressure of my boat on my motor i mean uh switches here live well one two both N you know nothing to you know nothing out of the ordinary everything here is fairly standard um some of the boats now the newer boats now have push button or torque touch pads i think that's a nice feature um, but I, you know, it is what it is. They work the same here. Um, what's here? Uh, nothing here. Just a little storage part spot here. Um, cup holder. What is it? And, you know, some place to store your, uh, your your sunglasses you need to, your cell phone, whatever you want. Um, pretty basic. But the big thing up here uh, is, is again the Helix, the Helix 10. It is mounted on a Bass Boat Technologies mount. Um, it's fairly rock solid it's just not going anywhere you know and i've been in some really rough water 
you know i don't have anything bad to say about that uh installation was a little tricky up here i have the same mount at the front and it was easier at the front um uh, but it was a little bit trickier here in the back but but not too difficult at all um it works fine it, it obviously holds because again i've been in some really rough stuff and it holds up just fine uh one more thing about the graph i mount my gopro i put a little sticky mail on the back of it and so far it stayed there now i get a little more vibration than normal when i'm mounting my gopro here but while i'm actually sitting down fishing or the boat is you know not running uh it, it does pretty good that's where i mount my gopro and uh you know it's barely now I'm eventually I'll, I'll do a video one day showing how i have my whole gopro set up uh but i do have that up here at the console as well um anything else up here uh it's all barely standard you know i will we'll take a look underneath of here real quick get that old worm out of here um the hot foot there's a vent right there up here i installed all this stuff well no not all this stuff but i installed uh that five port switch there um and so all of my electronics trolling motor the hummingbird 360 uh the transducers they all come in right here and they're all networked together using that hummingbird five port ethernet switch uh let's see here okay let's sit down here this is an important component important compartment here I have all my stuff in here from tournaments gotta have dude wipes because sometimes dudes need to wipe um here's something you guys probably don't know before every tournament i usually read this bible verse and uh I don't know i just read it i like it um gotta have your catch commander the best scale i've ever had um it's phenomenal you know it's easy to call i love it i keep it right here um uh, microfiber towel for whatever all your important legal stuff your fishing license your uh, boat registration anything you might need extra keys whatever whatever in here and then from there it's just odd ends you know a whistle to stay legal uh, the reason that is in north carolina you gotta have a noise device uh like a horn but if something happens to your boat and your horn doesn't work like i don't know bad battery or something you blow your whistle and the game board can't give you a ticket also have eye drops for just whatever sometimes crap gets in your eyes when you're fishing you need eye drops so and then germex the germex and the dude wipes kind of go hand in hand sunscreen lotion just in case lip balm just in case my trolling motor um remote uh, keep my keys in here um so as you can see like i try to think about everything and i put it in the boat in case i need it like how many guys in the boat have like eye drops i don't even have eye problems i'm just saying just in case something happens and i need eye drops i got eye drops um, sometimes like you'll get stuff in your eyes when you're fishing and then if that happens how are you gonna fish if you can't hardly see I will say this this you see this right here this this happens it won't close sometimes sometimes it'll close sometimes it won't um if you got two big boys sitting up here i'm kind of a halfway big boy so if i have two halfway big boys sitting up here it won't close right now it's fine because that that seat's not pushed out but what happens when you sit down it sit down this pushes down and it won't let it close not a big deal but i'm just letting you know two cup holders very basic nothing here this is where i keep my rejuvenate or please release me uh or g juice while we're talking about live whales i do not use a g juice anymore crap spills everywhere uh it's also in a bigger container uh so i, I just prefer the power stuff this is easier to store and it all works the same and none of it's any better it's all made out of the same stuff i think uh, so this is what I'm, I'm swapping up between rejuvenate and please release me see which one I like better so far they're about the same no big deal extra uh, coal tags just for whatever you just never know something might break when you're on the road and look I told you about the cow coast right I hate the look at look how, look how hard this is look, you know, this this is the most aggravating coal tag that you can have when you're on the water you're trying to get stuff done and you got to it's just very difficult to open this thing it's it's not these are not ideal i'd highly which one would you rather do in a tournament situation when every second counts you want to take the time to try to you know get your fish and look i'm can you can't do it one hand i'm holding the camera one hand doing this with the other this is very difficult to do with one hand or look at this lots easier use the th marine product all right what's next got a little sticker there a little sticker action the guys like stickers most of the time 
I got another sticker up here, but uh, it um, I need to get another one. It's kind of it must not have been that good of a quality because it's coming off. Uh, Seaguar, I am on Seaguar's Pro Staff. Very proud of that too because I like Seaguar. They make good products. Uh, fishing line for whatever technique you want. Um, let's see what's next. Since we're sitting here, the seats seats are comfy. Um, I don't, I don't know. There's not a whole lot I can say about the seats. They look good. They look really good. They match the boat. I'm really happy. They are comfortable. Like I've, I've been taking. I don't take. I don't really make long runs. But if I'm in the seat for 30 minutes or so, it's, it's not a big deal. It's very comfortable. They do sit a little low, but I'm only five six. So let's tell you what. Let's do this. So I'm sitting here. I'm five six. I got the camera right here where my eyes are, and so you can kind of see where that is. Uh, so it sits a little low, but I'm shorter. So, so most guys probably wouldn't be an issue. Love this box. Love this box. It's a day box. Love it. This is where I put my stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using that day. Whatever worm I'm using that day, whatever, you know, any, all my, just, just a day box used for soft plastics. Love this box. This is a great, great box. I, need, I wish I had two of them like it. Um, so I really love the day box. Another cup holder. Uh, rod storage for your co-angler that's that okay let's go here to the cooler i don't know how big this cooler is but it'll hold 20 20 pounds of ice so do with that what you want 20 pounds of ice is what will hold in here nothing really i can say about it other than that but i will yeah there is something i can say let me see if i can dig in here you see this little black thing there ice and water will store up in here and it will not get out no matter what you do there's no drainage there's a plug at the bottom of here um and so it'll all run out you know if it's in this section this is two sections but here there is no drainage hole so i don't know what this black cap is but i took a very small screw drill and i drilled a hole in it and now it all runs out and water will not collect in here anymore so that is something to think about um, in your uh, in the in the wish there was better a little bit of drainage in this front storage compartment here in this cooler. As far as how good the cooler is, it it'll 20 pounds will last you in the North Carolina heat. It'll last you a day. Um, one, 10 pounds, one bag of ice will not. It'll be gone by like 11 o'clock. But 20 pounds will last you. Okay, so it's, so it's a decent cooler. Um, you know, no complaints with it. Not really, other than the drainage issue and that front, again, the front compartment here. The bottom down there, there is a drainage hole, but this is two sections here and the, and the front section just will not drain, so I had to drill a hole in that black cap and it drains out into the bottom of the boat. All right, let's talk about this right here. <clears throat> I'm never, ever, ever gonna store tools here and I would love to be able to store tools because I have most of my stuff stored right here you know, that's fine, but I'd love to be able to put some pliers here, but I'm not going to put them here. You know why? Because you are going to trip over them and you don't want to be tripping on a boat because you're going to end up out of the boat. So, um, I don't like the placement of this. I love the, the ruler. The ruler situation is cool because it's flush and you're not going to trip over it. But if you put pliers here, do I got any pliers? I got a hook remover. You're going to trip over that. You're going to walk up here all the time. And what if you're fighting a fish or your co-angler comes up here to help you net him? He's going to trip over that. He is, eventually, one day. So, I can't use this. Uh, Rangers have their tool storage down here where it's recessed a bit. Um, I'm sure other, I don't know about other, I just noticed Ranger does. But I, I, I wish they would move this down um, because this is in the way. You're going to trip over it. So, I can't recommend that. All right, let's move on. What's in here? This is a rod locker. Let's count how many we got in here. These are all Kistler rods, by the way. Kistler rods and Shimano reels. There might be one loose in there or so. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18. I think I'm counting 18, but I thought I had 20 in there. Either way. That's just fine, say 18. I could easily fit four more in here, but I'm pretty sure 
there's more than that in there. I'm pretty sure you could, if you absolutely had to, you could fit 25 rods in here. But the very first thing you need to do when you get this thing is take out them rod. When the boat comes to you, when you buy the boat, it's going to have these rod tubes down there. And I hate them. You cannot fit nearly as many rods in here with that rod tube in here. It's two or three screws that hold it in. Unscrew it, pull it out, and you can fit so many more rods in here. Okay? So um, there should be no problem with you putting about 25 rods in this rod locker. No problem. No problem at all. Real quick, I use the rod glove and the bait glove. This right here will save you so much trouble getting your rods in and out all right also when you're storing your your reels um it's kind of difficult for me but make sure when you store these in here to have them all so the reel handle is in line with the rod see how that's all in line there it just helps pull them out in and out easier see how this one was a little bit harder to get out a while ago because it was sideways now it's in there bang see comes out much easier but you turn it sideways first of all i won't even go in there that good but say it is in there like that it was a little bit difficult more difficult to get out so keep them all parallel it'll help you on tournament morning when you're reaching in here trying to grab stuff but yeah 25 rods easy easy i think i got 18 or 20 in here right now but uh yeah nothing 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 else to say about the rod locker it's good it works um you know it's it's big it's, i think they actually call it oversized an oversized rod locker and it kind of looks like it next up this is where all the juice is this is how i got all my stuff laid out all right now because i don't have this is where i keep some of my tools in this cup holder why do you have cup holders in here do, do people open this thing up and put put drink in here i don't understand like i don't think you need cup holders in here this would be this space these little this sections here would be better utilized for something else not cup holders all right you know i, I, don't, I don't we can do better we, i mean i could just utilize that space better if their cup holder wasn't there i mean i'd prefer to have this down here to be honest with you but um but yeah there's that a lot of storage in here this is a big compartment if uh you absolutely had to you could crawl in here in like during a thunderstorm or something you really could you could take all your tackle out real quick and, and crawl in here and hide um it's really big uh let's count the boxes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four storage boxes and a, and, a, and a majority of a lot of them are the are the double deep kind so you can get a lot of storage in here also it's all about organization knowing what you need and getting it quick bang i need a top water okay here's my top water box um i need a 1.5 not a 2.5 but 1.5 okay here's my 1.5 box um i need a ewg hook oh okay here's my hook box no i need a shaky head hook okay here's my shaky head box you know so keeping your stuff organized organized i have my boat set up for tournament fishing everything about it is to help me be a tournament angler and, and something as simple as names on a box goes a long long way something else that goes a long way is this thing right here by th marine i think it's called the tackle titan i don't know i think that's what it's called but here's a good example let me see here let me grab a an old lake norman speed trap here all right watch this bang did you see that let's do it again because in case you didn't see it bang right there that's awesome so what happens sometimes when you're fishing you will take your uh you, it'll be wet you'll want to switch switch off uh you you want another crankbait and you untie you'll cut this one off and put it back in your box and then shut the box down and guess what just happened you just ruined that crankbait and all the crankbaits that are close to it because you just got water on all of them and they're going to rust so when i'm crankbait fishing 
which at certain times of the year it's quite often when i'm done I'm trying to grab one here when i'm done fishing with it i can just take it stick it up there let it hang for a minute and i'm good all right so pretty simple pretty easy that's a nice and very very nice thing to have i got it mounted no holes there's no holes in it up there it's mounted with uh gorilla tape double-sided gorilla tape works good to the front where all the magic happens all right so the boat came with a minkota minkota four tracks which is just a trolling motor that nobody really runs anymore um the old tracks is a standard from minkota now I like Minn Kota, so I wanted a Minn Kota. So I bought and installed this Minn Kota Ultrex. Um, I also installed, bought and installed the Summonbird um, Helix 10 and the TH Marine Hydro 8. Really good products. Um, I can't say for sure that the Hydro Wave has helped me catch fish. I don't know. I can't seem to put. I, I don't I feel more comfortable with it on like it covers up some of the boat noise you know so I'll usually run it on like a finesse setting or a crawfish setting or something like that um, but I'm not just not hundred percent sold on it I don't know for sure if it's helped me catch fish or not I don't know it does seem that when I catch fish it's on I'll tell you that but that's because it's on all the time <laughs> um, all right, so what else about it? This is your command center, and if there's a spot on your boat where you need to invest money, it is up here. You know why? Because this is where you spend 90% of your day. This is where the magic happens, okay? So this is where you need to invest money. Invest money in your front graph. Uh, invest money in your trolling motor. Um, and anything, invest, invest as much as you can up here to help you catch more fish, and that's kind of what I've done. I do wish that I had two graphs up here. I, I wish I had one dedicated for mapping and maybe eventually I will one day, but the cost of graphs right now is just through the roof and I just can't, fat, I just can't right now. So, you know, I'm running with what I got and if, if it's an inconvenience to have to switch here between mapping and um, my 360, uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't mind bending over and hitting the butt button if I need to. So, um, but let's see, anything else about this up here? um it's about it i mean i do have two pucks up here one is a compass here and then one is a heading sensor for the trolling motor um i have two more bob's machine shop products up here another deck plug and then i have a um whoa, bounce buster no that's not is that called a deck no what's it called i can't remember but anyway the trolling motor when i pull it up the bounce buster um will sit on that and it'll just you know kind of protect the the carpet there a little bit plus it i just think it looks cool it matches everything the orange look um you do have some tool holders up here um usually i just keep my scissors up here um a couple of switches there for your trim you can trim up and down there's an accessory switch there that i don't think anything's wired to right this second um that's the about that on my trolling motor this is a really nice thing to have uh just called a troll jacket from th marine as well um it really does a good job of keeping everything nice and neat up here so yeah that's pretty much that i mean it's just, it's the front of the boat um i spend all my time up here i feel like i should have something else more to say about the front deck um but i just don't it's fairly simple i'd like i say i'd love to have another graph up here and maybe one day i will the front deck is padded you can you can kind of tell you can when you when you're walking up here you can kind of tell now whether that makes a difference uh during you know after eight hours on the water i don't know i think if you have back problems and you need a padded front deck that's great uh you should definitely get the padded front deck but if you really have back problems and you want to be, feel better at the end of the day the best thing you can do is buy a really good pair of shoes and i don't mean like these fishing shoes that some companies make and advertise them as fishing shoes do you need to get you a legitimate pair of shoes that have really good arch support and uh, will help you you know just during standing like 
um, you don't know, don't worry about buying something from a specific company just because they have it advertised as a fishing shoe. All right, buy something that really helps your back. And the padded front deck will help, um, but again, a good pair of shoes will go way further. What's next? Is that it? I think that might be it. That pretty much might be the whole boat. I, uh, you know, I can't think of anything else that we can talk about. I mean, the boat's good. You know, I also get another question asked of me all the time. How does the boat handle in rough water? And I'll tell you what, how about I let you just see this video? So yeah, is it the absolute best rough water boat you can get on? Yet no, because it's only a 19 footer. Well, it's 19 foot nine inches. Um, if you're gonna be in a rough water a lot, you need a 21 footer, period. Um, but this is not a 21 footer, but for a 19 TRX, a 19 foot class boat, it handles it fine. All right, slow down. A hydraulic jack plate would help because you can put, your, put that motor all the way down in the water as deep as it'll go and kind of churn through but slow down, trim down, uh, and you can take on the waves just fine. So it does handle big water. Uh, it's fast, it is fast. I get asked that a lot too. This boat will do 74 under the right situation, the right circumstances, under the, 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 the right driver. Um, the boat needs to be balanced correctly. I'm glad I said that, because I need to talk about that. But balanced correctly, uh, it, it will run mid 70s it'll it'll do 74 i never do that fast you and it's just too easy to die once you get over 55 you know it's very rare for me to go over 55 um it's really very rare for me to go over 45 really i will do 65 bla at blast off in a tournament but most of the time throughout the day i just cruise and cruise around i just i'm not a speed demon like some of you guys are boat balance so if you noticed let's go back here again let's open these up if you noticed both of these sides are full but one of them's full with clothing and life jackets or well, clothing material i should say and one of them's full with tools and lures and just all kinds of stuff that's really heavy and then on this side of the of the you know the bilge area is the big old cranking battery and then on this side is three lithium ionic batteries that weigh 15 pounds a piece so I've balanced the boat out as good as I can back here. And that'll help with your chine walk, okay? You know what chine walk is? It's when your boat, it's when you're on plane and the boat's wanting to do this. So that'll help. Just trying to find the perfect balance and it's different for every boat. It really is. The boats could be made in the same factory, the same way by the same people and it's just gonna be different, you know, because you're different. You know, you don't weigh the same. Everybody doesn't weigh the same and then you know, you might have somebody fishing with you one day and one day not. So it's just different. So about, about find the, the perfect balance for your boat and uh, it'll ride better for you. It'll ride faster for you. It'll ride safer for you. So that is my Triton. I like it. You know, I don't know how long I'll have this boat. I don't know if, if it'll probably be a good long time before I get another boat. And I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm happy with this one. It's done me good. It's 19 footer. I can get in and out of certain places a little bit easier than some other people. Um, I, I like Triton. They've done good. You know, they, I feel like they've made a good boat. I really do. I like it. So it fishes good. It's got a big giant front deck on it. Um, you know, I'm I, like I say, I don't know when I'll get another boat. But if it's a Triton, I'll be happy with it. Uh, it based on my experience with this one. So that's about it uh yeah i like it that's about the the gist of it you've seen the inside of it you've seen the outside of it i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you're able to use this video as a help a decision to help you buy uh a triton in, in the near future 
or any bass boat really if you're looking for a triton a ranger a nitro um, aluminum or fiberglass i bought this boat from angler's choice in lexington tim pope he's the guy that sold me this boat he helped me get in it helped me with the financing to hold nine yards and i can give you his direct contact information if you need it um, anyway i give him a plug because i'm very grateful for him helping me uh you know purchase this boat so that's that guys appreciate you watching hopefully this video helps you make an educated decision you can see how i've laid my boat out for tournament bass fishing for traveling um i have everything i need in this rig so hopefully you can use it this video to help you in some way appreciate you watching i'll see you back on the water soon